Okay, this is the third part of a four-part series on this modular portable garage that I've built in SolidWorks. Let me take a moment to show you the flooring system. Uh, the flooring system compri is comprised of BCIs on the bottom with these uh, composite laminate beams that are made out of 2x4s on edge and then 2x4 uh, spacers above the BCIs. And so that's what's unique about this mod, uh, modular garage. So you can drive a vehicle and you don't get floor sag. So I have master sketches that control the walls. There's a floor plan and then a front wall master sketch, rear wall, and then a left wall. And I just mirrored the left wall. So going back down here, we have all the bottom plates. And... Then you have, after the bottom plates, um, you have a derived sketch and the top plates. I could have just as easily copied those up there. You know, six doesn't half the other. And then as you can see, the second set of plates crosses. Obviously in real life you wouldn't put those on until the walls were stood up, but this is CAD. What I'm using here for the uprights in the garage door opening are LVLs, uh, laminated and lumber would be another term for them. This one is 11 and 7 8 beam and I'm using that for both sides of the garage door opening. And then you can also see the cutout for the header that would be put in, uh, same material. And so there's the header without the trim, and then they use a uh, trim command to extend that into the actual cutouts in the LVL uh, verticals. And then here you see just short little filler 2x4 pieces. Next we have um, the framing back at the rear wall. And so what I did is I just stacked up three studs on the edges. Um, you may find that to be overkill. I like doing that. It just gives some extra structure. And then it looks like what I've done is started on the sidewall. I've got three posts here. That's probably not necessary. Uh, the thing is, 2 by 4s are so cheap. You don't have to put that many in the corners. Uh, I personally don't mind it. And in real life, <clears throat> I would drill all these studs ahead of time for wiring to go around corners and stuff. I just uh, pick a height and drill all the studs. Everything gets drilled so you can have, and if you're going to do uh, any type of water or plumbing, that would be the time to do that as well. And then here you have the left side wall uh, just common studs all the way down from the front and the reason I didn't put the windows in right away was because I wasn't sure where they were gonna go at first you know this looks planned out but I had to run some numbers and see where the windows were actually gonna go with cabinetry and whatnot so that's why I didn't do the window frame out till afterwards all this framing is done off of the original master sketches. Um, I just do convert entities from the master sketch and push those entities into a sketch, same plane. Uh, I just don't want to consume the master sketches, so I always push the entities with the convert entity forward into a new sketch. Here you can see the pieces underneath the windows. There's going to be a header in here somewhere. So I did some copying and mirroring to get these um, king studs. And I think they call this California style. I do it this way because a framer friend of mine showed me that you can, if you don't get your rough framing opening square, by doing it this way you can adjust them. You can pry and shim these boards on the sides here king next to the header and then a trimmer that passes through the sill this way you can actually adjust out your opening 
and then some trim commands so that I can get these headers to go all the way to the king studs. Also the trim command got rid of the studs in the window openings. So here you can see we're going to add the uh we're going to start adding the framing for the side window. And that was pulled in from the original master sketch converted entities. And that brings in the trimmer and the sill plate and uh you may want to double up on the sill plate. I don't know that's that's your personal preference. You can see right here there's a stud in the road. I'm just going to move that over. It'll probably end up becoming the king stud. This one's going to get moved over and another one's going to get added. I didn't put double bottom or double sill plates in. You can do that if you want to. So some moving and trimming and extending or trimming, trim extend. And some of this I started doing to the other side of the framing just because I knew they were going to need to be moved. And I think if I go down to here, I'll probably get the rest of my framing, get those common studs trimmed out, get my headers in, and I believe that body delete is to delete some of the unneeded common studs on the other side. Because I'm just going to mirror a whole bunch of these trimmed out pieces over, which it did. You can see the gap right there. So next is going to be the rim joist. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to mirror the siding over as well. So then this next one is front siding. I should say sub siding. Well, it depends on what you do. I'll probably just go straight to T111. Unless it's uh, not legal and then I'll have to do subsiding and siding. I can't remember what the what the code is. Uh, and then we're going to do the probably the front wall next. Maybe the left wall. Looks like it was the front wall. So T111 or subsiding or whatever you want to call it. Uh, then we got left wall subsiding. Then we're going to mirror siding or subsiding and framing over. All right, now that we have the other, the framing and the siding mirrored over, I think we're going to stop there for this uh, particular part three. On the next part, we are going to cover the roof, sheetrock, and then some things I noticed that I missed while we were going through these videos. They're little things, but they do matter. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this third part to the four-part series. Thanks.